you so much for having me. Um, brother, today we've been talking about marriage and about uh, sisters choosing the right spouse. Um, from your perspective as a man, what would you advise sisters? What sort of questions and what information would you advise sisters to be asking and finding out uh, before they get married so that they can ensure that they're choosing the right spouse? Okay, Jazakallah for the question. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a great question actually because a lot of times it's the perspective of the men that saw when it comes to marriage. We usually look at that. So we ask what do guys look for, you know, what pleases them and so on. But of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created uh, from Adam, Hawa, his wife. And to signify the closeness of the two. And in the relationship, there's two people, of course. And a lot of times we need to also ask, you know, what makes a woman attracted to a man? What would make her accept someone and reject someone, right? And living in the 21st century, we find in my work, working as a counselor, as a school principal, as a day, I get a lot of questions from brothers and sisters about you know what should i look for in a future spouse what should i look for and you know my future husband my future wife and people are confused the 21st century is a very very confusing time when it comes to this marriage has become even something like you know overrated taboo even right there's there's just so many things around marriage so many insecurities people hesitate to get married they delay to get married out of fear of choosing the wrong person. And I think most of my questions that I received surround that insecurity. This morning, actually, I received a question from someone who was, uh, subhanAllah, was saying that they rather, subhanAllah, pay attention, they rather be in haram, kind of, uh, or do something haram than to make the wrong choice and get divorced and, you know, have a problem in their life. And I kind of, I thought about it, I said, subhanAllah, we've reached that stage where we'd rather uh, displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than actually, you know, take some risks in our lives. And when we look at the lives of the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet and the women as well, the Sahabiyah, we find that marriage was very, very common, very popular, and people were not scared. They went ahead and they got married and alhamdulillah, it worked work and some divorce but the one and most important thing for them with regards to considering someone for marriage was the taqwa okay how they feel towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and actually the objective of their marriage was for this so they didn't think about they didn't overthink and say oh, what if this is going to happen five years down the road what if this is going to happen next year what if I you know I find after one year that this person is not the person that I wanted they didn't think about these things. They did their istikhara, okay, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. They did their istishara or asking others for what do they think, what do you think about this person, what do you think about my choice? And then, you know, by the azanta fatawakar Allah. And when you take a decision, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sounds easy, huh? It's not so easy, right? <laughs> it's definitely so, not so easy, no. <laughs> right. So obviously and as as a as a man, um, it's, it's quite uh, you know you're asking me what should women look for? <laughs> I think we should be asking women, isn't it? But I'll tell you uh, one thing that um, that I believe is is quite important as an indication for us uh, when we pick our spouses, and specifically for sisters as well. I'll give this uh, this this uh, advice to the sisters. And I'm going to just kind of take the hadith and, and just twist it, not twist it in wrong, but just kind of uh, flip it around. So the hadith is by Abu Hurair radiallahu anh, and it's narrated in Bukhari Muslim, is about the people, what do they marry a woman for? Specifically males, what do males look for in a woman? And the Prophet said the woman is married for three things, right? So one of them is her beauty, her lineage, her wealth, and her religion, or her deen, or taqwa, right? And he said, Pick the taqwa, right? So we're left with that hadith and understanding it. And of course, men think about that and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but that hadith can be somehow 
extracted and applied to women as well, mm -hmm. right? Now, women, when they look at a man, what do they like, right? What are they looking for in a man? Do they look for money? Well, it is possible, and there's nothing specifically wrong, but it shouldn't be your top priority. Don't expect your husband to be an ATM machine, right? <laughs> there's no, I, th I think that, I think it's just natural. You, 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 you don't, if someone is just like after money, that's their main objective in life, you kind of have like this like turn off, right? It's like, no, that's not, it's not what um, equals piety and righteousness. Yeah. However, is that dismissed? No, because see, women look for security. And a lot of times finances uh, reflect on a man's ability to provide security and strength and protection for that woman, right? Women are removed from their family's house where they receive love, care, and support from their father, from their mother, and now they go into a strange man's house. And this man comes up and says, look, I want your daughter. And then the father says, okay, all right, alhamdulillah. But what can, can you take care of my daughter? I mean, that's what it translates into when we're talking about financial security. Mm -hmm. Can you take care of my daughter? I'm not asking you to buy a Mercedes. I'm not asking you to buy a new dress every week. I'm asking you, can you take care of her? Can you provide the basics for her or more? Can you, if you have children, can you make sure that you're going to give them an education and you're going to be able to put roof on their head, uh, put food in their mouth? And so, I mean, this, this makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important. It's important. It's not the top thing. It's not, you know, what people should look after in the first place, but it is one of the things that's on the list. Absolutely. And if right. I can just if I can just interrupt you there for a minute, brother, sure. um, I was saying earlier in the program that I think it's really important that people are on the same path so that if somebody is very if the woman's very materialistic and the man's very materialistic, then that's going to work for them. But if somebody is not, you know, one is more materialistic than the other and the other one's not really interested in, in this dunya, that they're more interested in the in Jannah, then they're on different paths and that can be very, very difficult. So at the time of getting to know each other at the first initial stages, the questions I think that they need to be asking each other is based on where they are in their own selves and their path, the path that they're, that they're on. Um, if I can just sort of uh, move the question along a little bit and ask you, um, what are the signs? I mean, we know what the signs are of a bad marriage once they've got married and that they've made the wrong choice. We, it's very clear what the, <laughs> it's very clear uh, what uh, what the signs are there. But when it comes to pre pre marriage, so before they actually tie the knot, are there any signs that show, oh, this person might not be the right one for me? Well, of course, there are signs, and that's what I think I was um, alluding to the hadith, right? Because, um, and I, if you don't mind, I'll just complete it, because um, it's important, yes, you said that maybe some people are not on the same page, right? Some are more after dunya, some are more after akhir. But again, I think, I think when it comes to marriage, a lot of practicing brothers and sisters, especially when they start practicing, uh, they have this idealistic, holier than the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba syndrome that I call it, where they, you know, they kind of sit together and the brother says, yes, yeah, sister, I can do this, I can do that, alhamdulillah, um, I've done a degree in, in, in engineer, in engineering, and alhamdulillah, you know, I've achieved this, this, and the sister says, no, stop, brother, I'm not interested, I just want to pray qiyam and fast every other day. Uh, Jazakallah for coming, see you tomorrow. And that's not actually the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the life of the Sahaba. All right. And what happens is then she gets another guy who says, yeah, I fast every day and I pray every night and this and that. And they're like, wow, yes, this is my the right husband. And they end up uh, starving within a, a year because they're both just praying and fasting every time. And they're expecting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reveal something from the sky for them. And the Prophet said, well, and the hadith of the birds leaving their nest, right? So I think a lot of times youth make that mistake when they become very practicing, where they have this idealistic over uh, the Prophet and Sunnah of how to deal with marriage, and they only focus on the Akhirah. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fattaghi fi ma taqa Allahu darul Akhirah, wa la tansa nasiba kamin al dunya." Seek with what Allah has given you the hereafter, but don't forget your share of this dunya. 
so I believe that's why I started with that, that yes, even wealth and and I don't mean like dunya, 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 right? We know dunya sejino mukmin wa janatul kafir, right? That's not what we just want, dunya. But I think there has to be a balance where a woman looks in a man and should ask a man if he's able to be a real man, okay? And that's probably one of the work that I do the most in focusing towards the youth. And when I do pre-marriage counseling, I say to them, sisters, sisters, make sure, I'm not, don't, don't, your husband doesn't have to be the next doctor or scientist. Just make sure that he's a real man and can take care of you. Let's, let's make it as simple as that, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, that yes, you should be from or have a good uh, lineage or if that's not happening, let's say you're not Muslim or whatever and you become Muslim, but you should have good character and, and a good direction. Okay, as something very, very important. And that can be seen. Mm -hmm. If someone sits for a pre-marriage discussion and notices that the guy or, you know, he's kind of like acting up, he's not being natural, he's um, nervous, he's uh, not shy. There's nothing wrong with being a bit shy, but, you know, they're trying to impress and they're trying to act up. That's an indication that the person not being genuine a lot of times, right? And I think women feel that. When the guy tries to impress them too much and so on. So you want a genuine character. You want someone who is who's a real man, who can take care of you. You want someone who's genuine, who's sincere. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given us this ability to feel people. When someone pretends, when someone's not sincere, you can feel it. Absolutely. You know I mean? Absolutely.